The second topic of module 2 is value stream map. The first component of this module we discussed was process metrics. These metrics are heavily used in value stream mapping. In a sense, we learned those metrics to draw value stream mapping. Value stream map, or VSM, is one of the best tools to grasp how values are flowing through a process. Value stream mapping is a process map that shows how the value creation of a product or service takes place inside of operations. The process of creating a value stream map takes all the necessary people, processes, information, and inventory and displays them in a flowchart format. By visualizing all elements that go into creating a product or service, organizations can apply lean principles to reduce waste in specific area of their processes. A value stream map displays all the important steps of, of your work process necessary to deliver value from start to finish. It allows you to visualize every task that you are, your team works on and provides a single glance status reports about each assignment's progress. The primary purpose of creating a value stream map is to show you where you can improve your process by visualizing both its value adding and wasteful steps. You just have to display every vital step of your workflow and evaluate how it brings value to your customer. This allows you to analyze your process in depth and provides you with a precise insight into where you should make changes to improve the way you work. Value Stream Map enables you to identify wasteful activities, provide a clear view of work process, and bring the focus on future improvement. VSM might be the most critical thing to do in major phase. Then, how do we draw value stream map? Here are six steps to take. First, define customer value. Second, create a current state map, which is known as as is chart. Third, add data to as is chart and analyze. Fourth, apply team you would to the activities. And I will explain what that means later. Fifth, create future state map to visualize the desired state. Sixth, create action plans to move toward future state. Then let us walk through these six steps to draw v, uh, VSM. Let us read this exercise together. Sasha and Andy have opened a hot dog stand at their local park. They offer a hot dog with a choice of fresh fruit and beverage to walk up customers between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Customers put on their own condiments. Customers say their hot dogs are good, but the wait is a little too long. After two weeks, they have a brisk and growing business. Andy and Sasha notice they are barely keeping up with the customer demand and making a little money after buying their supplies at the end of each day. They would like to improve their process to meet growing customer demand. They collected the following average data for their business processes and need help analyzing it. And here are 11 processes uh, in a sequential manner. The first step is to define customer value. Value is what the customer is buying from the value stream. For example, a total value stream may provide a storage cabinet to an end, end customer. The value that the end customer is buying is an orderly organized area which they create by buying the cabinet, some bins, and some labels. In this Sasha and Andy exercise, what would be the value? In this in the description, we can tell the customer values are good food and best service. Price is not as important at this, at this point. 
what Sasha and Andy should keep on asking is this question. Are my customers willing to pay for this service? Step two is drawing as is process map, current status map. Module one covered how to draw a process map. There we learned the importance of using right symbols and arrows. Here we learned that uh, first step was taking order and it goes to uh, in order uh, storage. And then the third one is getting order cooked and uh, fourth one is putting in bun and wrapping and adding fruit and uh, we have to ask whether there's another dog to cook if so we have to go through this process if not then we can get order uh, ready and we can go to uh, out of order and uh, um, um, Sasha will check whether the order is okay and uh, she will make sure uh, to add a beverage there and then deliver it to the customer. And uh, uh, between the time, you know, uh, there, there must be cleanup time and setup time as well. So those things are identified in this uh, process map. As step three, we need to add the data to the uh, process map. In this exercise, the data is already measured and given. Usually time-based measures are essential for VSM. Almost all process map requires time spent per activity. So we can add them to a process. Quality is also mentioned in this exercise. While almost all the activity has 100% quality level, such activity as order verification has 90% of accuracy. Measuring quality level can be challenging, but very useful for the process. There can be other measures depending on the circumstance, such as inventory level, cash flow, and the number of people working on a task. After adding necessary data to the process map, we need to calculate process metrics. Let us go with the talk time and cycle time first because that's a uh, uh, fundamental metrics. Talk time is defined as available time divided by customer demand. From the exercise, we learned that Sasha and Andy works four hours per day and serve about 50 customers. Therefore, talk time is 4.8 minutes which is 288 seconds. Cycle time is adding all the time it takes to serve one customer. It is 7.4 minutes or 446 seconds. Here we obviously see that the cycle time is less than talk time, almost two times slower than talk time. At a glance, we can tell that this process cannot accommodate the customer demand in a timely manner. Backlog will build up and frustrate the customers as time goes on. Considering that there is a set of time and cleanup time, the available time for operation decreases even further down to 200 minutes per day. This is not a good news for Sasha and Andy. Uh, step four is to apply team new wood to tasks. So, so let us think about what are the value added time and not value added time, wait time, and touch times are? If we apply a team new wood to tasks, then we can identify that which are transportation time, or motion time, underutilization time, waste, overproduction, or uh, defects. And if you apply that, you know that uh, num test number one, nine, eight, three, four are value adding time because they are directly related to um, fulfilling the order. 
However, uh, task number two and five and the six, seven and eleven and ten are actually non-value adding activities because uh, they are just simply waiting, uh, and there is you know ten percent of uh, quality defect. Uh, cleaner time is necessary, however. It's not value adding at this moment because it's not directly related to delivering the order to the customers. Then we can also calculate utilization and capacity. Value adding time is only slightly over 50% at this moment, and the other 50% can be improved and spent for adding values. Available time is 240 minutes. Work time is touch time per order time times number of orders. For Sasha, it is 133 minutes, and for Andy, 187 minutes. So we see that Andy is more involved in this business than Sasha is. Utilization time is work time divided by time available. For Sasha, it is 55%, and Andy, 78%. Andy is highly utilized. As for capacity, it is defined as time available divided by touch time per order. And this capacity is 240 minute time, minutes times 60 divided by 224 seconds. So therefore, and this capacity is 64 hot dogs per day. At full capacity, he can handle 64 hot dogs. What about Sasha? If we go through the same calculation, it's 90.56. So Sasha can manage 90 hot dogs roughly per day. So Sasha has higher capacity than Andy. But in accordance with the bottleneck theory, the capacity of this entire process is limited to 64 dogs, hot dogs because that's all Andy can handle. Here's the value analysis summary. The analysis tells us that current production, 50 customers, is a little below current capacity, 64 customers per day. In other words, they can grow and accommodate higher demand up to 64 customers. The second thing that we learn is that Andy is working harder than Sasha. The work is unbalanced at this point and they should think of a way to balance the workload together. The third thing that we can learn from this value stream map is that the cycle time of the process is way longer than talk time. The cycle time definitely needs to be shortened. After the analysis, Sasha and Andy should consider ways to improve the business. Brainstorming is one way to go about. In step five, we need to create a future uh, state. In this state, we need to think about what our non-value adding or problematic tasks are. Wait time, lower quality, or inspection time can be reduced as much as possible. Sometimes another value adding task can be created in this step. By doing so, the business can increase its speed and set satisfaction level. Here we have arrived at value stream map. So let's add that. So we can cut out task number six and two. And uh, we can also try to remove or, or reduce non-value adding activities or inspection time. And also we see quality defect at 90% level, and we can decrease that defect as much as possible. So we have now a value stream map, and we completed it here. It is an extremely useful tool to analyze a process and find methods to improve.